Monsieur le ministre, euh, Laurent Fabius, euh, Monsieur Pierre-René Lemas, euh, CEO of the Caisse de Dépôt, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to say a few words at the end of this finance day. And what a day. And, and what a week, in fact. Uh, last night, uh, there was a working dinner uh, at the closure of the business summit, and I said there that if the UN Secretary General were here today, he would say he's very pleased because a number of the pillars of his climate change strategy are being implemented. There's a lot of good progress. That was yesterday. If he were here today, I could say that he would be even more pleased. So thank you for that. In fact, in the today and in the last few days, we have, we have seen a tectonic shift in the way the business and the private finance community are addressing the issue of climate change. There's consensus about the low carbon direction that we're all going toward. There is consensus on the need for a real carbon price. And the financial institutions are coming forward one after the other with announcements of concrete actions. Today's announcement by AXA of a number of actions they are taking toward decarbonization is part of these tectonic shifts. Who would have thought a year ago that there would be such announcements today? And we know that this is just the beginning. Just watch this space before the end of the year when we come back together in Paris for the action day. Watch the space. But today, I'd like to focus a little bit on what the Secretary General of the United Nations believes is needed on finance to deliver an ambitious agreement in Paris and how we can work together to realize the transformation to the low carbon climate resilient future. And I'm really, really encouraged to see the breadth of financial actors, both public and corporate, present at this meeting. Collaboration between the public and the private sector is essential. And the reality is that we need all of you working together to make this transformation possible and profitable. We need your leadership to move this conversation from the margins to the mainstream. As we heard today, there is no question that we can achieve this low carbon transformation without having economic growth. Indeed, it can be a catalyst for growth that is cleaner, more sustainable, and more equitable. These recent announcements by AXA, Caisse de Depot, Bank of America on carbon footprinting and reducing investment exposure to fossil fuels are all strong testaments to this fact. Investors and other financial actors are moving in this direction because they realize it is a smart business strategy and one that positions them very strongly for the future. That is why many of you were participants at the Secretary General's Climate Summit last September and why you're here today. And we are meeting at a pivotal moment. This year, three global meetings will set the growth and development agenda, including goals for sustainable development for the next 15 years. The discussions during the past two days at the business summit and today at the finance day underscore that the outcomes of the Paris Climate Conference in December must provide policymakers, investors, and the private sector with a clear sense of direction on where the global economy is and must be headed if we are to enable prosperity for all without compromising the health of our planet or ourselves. To make sure that governments, the business and the financial communities are fully aligned in the direction of low carbon development. And actually the signs are already on the wall. The world's three largest economies, the US, China and the EU have already placed their bets on a lower carbon future. For many, not least the Secretary General, it is clear which way the world is turning. So the task before us is to ensure that all countries are part of the solution and that the benefits of low carbon growth are realized by all. For that, we need a strong agreement in Paris later this year that provides predictability, certainty, and clear signals that the markets need to allocate capital where it most needs to go for sustained long-term growth. For Paris to be successful, there must be a strong, credible, and coherent climate finance package that addresses the political, economic, 
policy and solidarity dimensions of financing. On the political dimension, there must be a politically credible trajectory to mobilizing $100 billion per year by 2020. On this, uh, we need to welcome the announcement made by Chancellor Merkel just last weekend in Berlin, in which uh, she announced that Germany will double its climate finance uh, by 2020. This is a very strong position of leadership and we hope that other OECD countries will follow. But in addition to that, the Green Climate Fund must be up and running with projects that can be approved and funds that can be disbursed as soon as possible. To do so, we need at least half of the pledged contributions to enable the fund to allocate them by October 2015. This week, this was achieved as Japan finalized their contribution agreement. So this is good, now we can get going with the Green Climate Fund too. The private sector, you, has a role to play in attaining these objectives, both for the 100 billion trajectory and in the private sector facility of the Green Climate Fund, which can leverage public resources for greater impact. The political significance of these two elements cannot be underestimated. Both the 100 billion and the fund are seen as powerful litmus tests of trust by developing countries and are crucial for brokering a universal agreement in Paris. And there must also be a comprehensive finance package for the least developed countries and the low-income small island developing states. Public funding needs to be scaled up, but private sector support is also needed, especially for renewable energy and resilience measures. We need to demonstrate a sense of solidarity to the most vulnerable countries. On the policy side, credit enhancement is needed so these countries can tap into capital markets, risk insurance mechanisms like the African Risk Capacity and the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility need to be bolstered and incentives provided to boost private investment in risk mitigation. Earlier, Christiana Figueres remarked that a world under two degrees centigrade is insurable but a world above two degrees is not. So let's remember that. Beyond the political elements, there are of course clear economic and policy elements needed in the finance package for Paris. At the climate summit last year, the private sector announced some 200 billion in commitments. What I heard today from a number of actors in this area is that there is really good progress in fulfilling these commitments and even going beyond. And once implemented, these billions can help blaze a trail for the trillions in low carbon investment needed over the next 15 years for cities, energy, and agriculture. And this brings me to the policy dimensions of a finance package. We need a suit of fiscal incentives and other policy reforms that can drive low carbon transformation. Among others, this would include carbon pricing, a phase out of fossil fuel subsidies, and climate proofing financial regulation. And in this connection, we must welcome President Hollande's announcement last weekend in Berlin uh, that a law is about to be passed in France that will require institutional investors to disclose their carbon footprint. Taken in sum, this finance package should help build the political capital needed for an agreement in Paris and also unlock the additional trillions in financing needed to build a low-carbon, climate-resilient world. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary General will continue to play an active role on climate change and on climate finance in particular. Over the next six months, he will draw on his global convening power to mobilize support from leaders in the private sector with a focus on the finance industry. Many of you participated in the Climate Summit last year. You showed what is possible when business, finance, government and civil society join hands in a common endeavor for the common good. We need your leadership, your courage, and your commitment to go beyond business as usual to accomplish something truly historic this year. Simply put, you have an opportunity to meet the climate challenge by investing in smart, low-carbon solutions that benefit your shareholders today as well as your grandchildren tomorrow. You have the opportunity to lead by example and to show your elected officials how to get in front of one of the greatest economic transformations in history or risk being left behind. A climate change agreement in Paris will not be the end point 
but it must be the turning point in how the world collectively responds to the defining challenge of our time. This meeting today has contributed to that turning point already. The Secretary General thanks you for your leadership and looks forward to continuing with you. Thank you very much.